at one way. Uh, is it fair that when everyone, regardless of their religion or race, uh, pays taxes and, that ta and then that tax money is used to pay for schools and teachers, we then lump the students into just two groups, Muslims and non-Muslims. Muslims who don't <coughs> learn Islamic studies, all the other non-Muslims, including those who uh, don't have any religion, learn political moral. Hang on. If you think about it, Buddhists pay taxes, Christians pay taxes, Hindus pay taxes. Why don't we have political agama Islam, political agama Christian, political agama Buddha, Hindu, and why were I don't know the atheists? What why were they want to learn? Maybe political moral can detect that. <laughs> uh, why don't we have all this? Did Islam not teach us to be fair? If fairness means putting things where they rightly belong, surely the most rightful thing to do is to allow Buddhists, Christian, Hindus, Baha'is, and so on to learn about their own religion. Because after all, they have already paid for those services. Let us translate the Islamic values of choice into giving true choice to parents. Give them the choice to decide what religion their children will study in schools. This should not be dictated by the state especially when the dicta is unfair to those of other religions. Let us go to a second example. Let us look at how to ensure consumers pay the lowest prices for the best products. When I came back, uh, I, I, I'm hiring a car from Mayflower, a car hire company. I took the car at uh, GLIA. Uh, it, it's a product of Budana. Uh, apparently, it's labeled as a luxury car. And that, that was, this is the first time I'm driving the Proton Padana. And I'm, I'm t telling you, it's very different. Even a medium quality car in UK, I think, is better than Proton Padana. <laughs> <laughs> but let's not get into that. I can go on and on about Proton Padana. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but let us look at uh, how the insurance consumers pay the lowest prices for the best products. Surely, protecting the consumers and ensuring that consumers get the best deal is a very Islamic thing to do. How do we ensure consumers get the best deal? By providing a guarantee for choice and competition in the market. By removing government interventions in the market and allowing traders to compete with one another, or one another freely so that consumers get the best value for money. We have seen how government interventions only result in cronyism. This must be removed and the role of the state in the marketplace must be limited. Let us open up our markets for traders so that they have to compete to get, to get the best value for money. Who will benefit us, the consumers? Let us allow the Islamic values of uh, competing to be good. First, let me fire up. Belum belum menggadikan kebalikan. Doors to operate in the marketplace. This will allow the traders in their quest to attract uh, consumers also to be good for the, uh, for the consumers by providing consumers with the best value for money. Let us look at the third example, the Dasa economy baru, now a little bit dangerous now. Uh, I know many Islamists uh, try to justify this pro-Malay policy by saying that the Malays need help the most, and therefore they must be assisted. I don't know how these Islamists sleep at night, because if they truly believe that Malays need special treatment because they are all poor, they are either lying or are very naive. The reality is there are Indians, Chinese, Malays, Ibans, Kadazans, Orang Asli, and many more who are also poor and need help. Islam is a fair religion, and there is nothing more fair than abolishing the NEP that favors only one skin color and introduce a scheme to assist everyone who are in need. Yes, perhaps it should be done gradually, uh, but, but there should be a clear target and we should develop a timetable towards that aim. It baffles me to see how our Muslim politicians battling each other to argue how Malays are still poor and that the NEP is still needed. This is like arguing that they, the Malay Muslim politicians, have failed to do what they want to do, have failed to do what they were elected to do. And the Malay voters are even more ridiculous. They keep on electing this self-confessed failed politician. <laughs> than campaigning for the abolishing of the NEP towards the creation of a policy that truly helps those in need, regardless of race and religion. If Adil means to letakkan sesuatu kena pada tempatnya, to me, this is yang paling kena pada tempatnya, ialah jika kita menghapuskan apa-apa polisi yang mendiskriminasi, 
dan memberikan bantuan bagi sesiapa sahaja yang memerlukan full stop I can't uh, go into the details uh, uh, of each policy areas because of time to but my main point is we we should move away from debates on race and religion and start talking about really substantive policy issues the issue of freedom and liberty the, Malay, the Muslim Malays especially must grow up this is not just a Malay or Muslim country this is our country and you can see the diversity of our population just in this room look at the panel for example, it's very diverse well, when people talk about Malay rights, it is not necessarily because they want to threaten the Malays. It is because they want to improve the country as a whole. And, and you know, in, in the UK, when the Muslims start to speak up, we keep saying that it is not because we want to destroy the country, we want to destroy Britain. It is because we Muslims want the country to grow even better than what it is now. I know how it feels to be told to shut up because where I live in England, I am a minority as well. It saddens me to see my non-Muslim, non-Malay brothers and sisters to be told the same in Malaysia. So, let me conclude by saying this. I am a Malaysian Muslim. I consider myself an Islamist who believe in caste and liberal values. I live in England where I am a minority. I know it is not easy being in the minority. When you speak up, some, not all, of the majority says that you shouldn't punch above your weight. When you try to make constructive proposals, some, again, not all, of the majority say you are trying to change the historic agreements the country has already reached. But in all honesty, all that you want to do, all that we want to do, is to make the country better for everyone. Not just for yourself, not just for ourselves, for everyone. Somehow, because you are a minority, we are a minority, you and I are looked at with suspicion. That is why I'm urging every Muslim to try to make Islam truly a blessing for all nations by not going too much into, into emotive issues and try to be mature about things. And this is equal, equally applicable to people of all religions, not just the Muslims. We all should stop deliberately stirring up emotions and we should move towards debating policy issues using the moral values that our religions provide for us if you really want to use religion as a basis for your thinking. Let us stop debating and making things you know, more sensational than they are. Let us walk away from debates that appeal only to the emotions. Instead, let us debate policy issues and appeal to the intellect. Let us debate things that really make a difference to the life of everyone in this beloved country of ours. Let us think about how to introduce policies that can liberate the people from the grip of the state. Let us together find ways to give back freedom and liberty to the people, socially, economically and politically, while at the same time holding true the values of our religion. And especially to the Muslim, let us go back to the values of Islam that promote fairness, freedom and liberty, not the centralizing and socialistic tendencies of some Islamist factions. And I look forward to hearing the thoughts and views of other countries. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Juan Saito. When I was in London with him on, a, uh, on another discussion, um, after he spoke, many people from the floor asked him, Wan Saipo, why aren't you back in Malaysia yes. being a politician? <laughs> so let's see what he has to say to that. Um, one thing I will remember from tonight is his very blatant remark that there is nothing more fair than abolishing the NEP to have a policy that helps everyone in need. Uh, if I can just sum up three points that he has raised tonight. Number one, he compared the majority religion in Malaysia and the majority religion and race in the UK. Um, so there are trends and how these groups react in the same way. Number two, that there are actually multiple interpretations of a religion and this does not apply just in Islam but in other religions as well. And number three, if we can actually move away from talking about race and religion, but using these religious principles to translate, say, Islamic values into proper policies. Okay, um, even when, when he was speaking, I did have a question which we'll raise later. Since point number two talks about multiple interpretations, does that not also mean that we have multiple ways of translating these into policies? So the step from number two to number three, let's hold that thought there. Um, but let's move on to the, to the respondents. How we're going to do it is I'm going to 